There's baseball for everyone and a chance to play at any age bracket. We'll talk about it next on the Sports Zone. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Sports Zone for Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. I'm your host, John Nelson. It's one of the fastest growing amateur sports in the state. The North Texas Amateur Baseball League has now been around for 25 years. There's a chance to play at any age level. Jerry Mecca representing the North Texas Amateur Baseball League, my guest this week. And Jerry, it's baseball season to us. It may be mid January, but you have the fall league, summer play. Mm -hmm. It doesn't end. It's been around 25 years, yep. and this league is legitimate. If you don't think so, then take a look at the championship trophy and things that just aren't earned overnight. No, they're not. No, we have, uh, to your point, January is not too early. We're about to have tryouts in at the end of February and in early March. Our season starts at the end of March, you know, at the same time as Major League Baseball. And, you know, we're, we're signing up ball players right now who want to get on teams. And, of course, our established teams are getting their players ready to go. Jerry, if one has a question, how do I know this league is legitimate? You have a championship ring. You have mm -hmm. a baseball from the World Series that's yeah. held every year. Yeah. And as we said, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, outstanding fields, managers, everything just first rate. Yeah, I would say for volunteer organization mm -hmm. that doesn't get a paycheck, yeah, it's first rate. It's, for, it's expected, especially in MSBL, to put the teams on high quality fields, get them insurance in case they get hurt or in case there's a liability, uh, to, to play with good equipment, to be uniform not just stickers on the back of a t-shirt with a bunch of uh, ragtags. Uh, we play nine inning games and or to the extent that we can with time limits and uh, it's legitimate baseball. How did you get involved and what do you really like about uh, the league? You know, I got involved, gosh, 20 plus years ago when I was playing softball, uh, co-ed softball, which was enjoyable, but it was missing. I'd played competitive baseball, and there was something that wasn't quite there. And the shortstop I was playing with, I was playing third base, said, hey, uh, there's a tryout at Lowe's Field, which I don't think is even there anymore in Dallas, and uh, would you like to go? And we went, got on a team, and I've never looked back. We were talking off the air about the quality of the baseball fields and the diamonds. Mm -hmm. And if one grew up playing select baseball, yep. uh, they kind of expect good things and oh, first, yeah. rate, uh, first rate play. I would say that select baseball changed our league. Uh, not that we didn't have good fields before then, mm -hmm. but the expectation of the ball player today, who after playing, maybe they went as far as playing some level of professional baseball, or they just were a good high school ball player. They came up through these select organizations that put nice uniforms and volunteer or even paid for coaches on really high quality fields. And so when they get to our level, they're expecting that to be sustained. So it's not cheap. It's about $300 per ball player for a 20 game season. And uh, we try to let the managers play for free. That's, that's their only pay. <laughs> Give them a break. That's right. Yeah. What's the ratio of newcomers as compared to those uh, returning? Well, I, I would say for the first time in a couple of years, we actually have more returning teams than we have uh, new ball players. Um, but, I, you know, let's say if there's 450 members, we probably had 200 new members last year. But in previous years, we had the, the league had sort of shrunk mostly because of field availability and competitiveness of, of uh, you know, those select leagues, they rent all the best fields. So when we had, we had to get fields, we went out and made those adjustments, and then we started inviting people back because we had capacity. Yeah, yeah. That made a big difference. We'll talk about the uh, different bracket, the age breakdown, in fact, how many different levels are there? And what is the most competitive level in your estimation? Yeah, it's a good question. We, we actually have a, a, what we call an 18 plus open national. And that really is our most competitive, highest level players. Most of them had at least collegiate level play. Um, and again, some have been formerly professional ball players. Uh, and they have, um, yeah, that's, that, that's our six team, very competitive. You don't want to get in that unless you're really ready for the, <laughs> yeah. for the real thing. 
Uh, and then above that, we have uh, what we call that same age group, but American division. And it's, let's just say it's intermediate, a little bit less competitive. But some of the guys who are very competitive don't like playing in these, you know, let's call them tensor games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they will prefer to play American. And then we have a 35 and over age group, and we have a 45 and over age group. I became aware of this. Rob Davis of our staff uh, was a member and, and pitched a little bit. It had a little some arm issues, he but had, that was just Keith Augusta line. That's, yep. that's how you know. But uh, I became aware of that yep. and really didn't know how many different leagues mm -hmm. there were. I mm -hmm. thought it would, well, if you're 45 and over, that's it. You just yep. got one level of play, but that's uh, far no, from the truth. No, MSBL has been around since the late 80s. Um, we started a Dallas chapter in 88, long before I was involved. Um, there are Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio, and Austin chapters. There may be more, but they're the ones that I always see at the Texas Cup, which is our annual uh, state championship tournament. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's the real deal. There's a national office in Long Island. Uh, so there are 45,000 members in the, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And then in each year after the state tournament, there are national tournaments. Our World Series is in Phoenix every fall. and We play at all the top Rangers and Royals and Brewers, their, their, their Cactus League practice fields. And, uh, and they're, they're stadiums. They're nothing to, 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 to you know, scoff at. You, know, you play in really good fields. And then, um, and then, of course, the players, you know, they can play fall ball. And we have a rookie league that is really kind of like the entry league. So if you've been out of baseball for a while and you're, you're watching this and think, I'd like to get back in, but I'm 45, 50 years right. old, you can come out, join, get in a 10-game league, knock the cobwebs out. And then all the managers from other teams, they run those the, that those games and they come and s pick players. It's well, that's kind of great like for our, the rookie league because yep. you can kind of ease back into Absolutely. it and not expect a 50, 60 game schedule. No, no, <laughs> you would never get that really. Well, you can probably play 45 games in a season if you're a really hard driver. Mm -hmm. You'd play the spring, you'd play rookie, and you'd play fall ball. But that's a lot of baseball for, let's say, the folks who don't get paid for it and they uh, and they are doing it on their not quite weekend warriors because we play during the week as well. It's baseball year round, the North Texas Amateur Baseball League, our topic this week on the Sports Zone. A break here and back with more right after this. <laughs> 